Well, I've never seen this before. Those are the words of a long-standing professor of law after watching Thursday's KSLA investigation, or actually Wednesday's report, on the city of Shreveport admitting to blocking emails from a local publisher and columnist who is a self-proclaimed government watchdog. And when you start denying the media access to ask reasonable questions, to make public records requests, to make reasonable communication, then we have a problem. Uh, that's the publisher of Focus SB and the Inquisitor yesterday, John Settle. He says he first noticed emails weren't going through to the city's attorney's office for public records requests or to council members earlier this week. In an email in response to Settle and KSLA, the city's IT director, Keith Hansen, admitted to blocking his email from reaching anyone in the entire city of Shreveport domain for the last two weeks at the request of a city council member. Well, today I talked on the phone with Hansen. He still refuses to provide the name of that council member or the reason why. In Hansen's last email to me, he wrote the block made was an error. So when I asked what he meant by error, he would not explain. Remember, this block was in place for two weeks. That's a two week error then. In his initial email said it was done on purpose to block Mr. Settle across the entire city domain until he could figure out how to limit the block to just that one person who requested it. Now, our growing interest in this situation is for one reason and one reason only, protecting our rights under the First Amendment to ask questions to city, parish, county, and state officials and hold them accountable if necessary. A professor and the director of the Tulane Law School's First Amendment Law Clinic told me today she was kind of surprised to hear this. I, I think it's very surprising. I've not, I've not heard of a city blocking a person's email from reaching any city recipient before. We all know that he does a, a number of pieces. Some feel controversial. He recently did a number of stories on a couple of people within city government at Shreveport. He feels this may be some sort of retaliation. Your thoughts on any government entity, if that is the path they chose? One of the things that uh, is very clear under the First Amendment is that the government can't retaliate against somebody because it disagrees with what they've said. Um, meaning if, if somebody speaks out or criticizes the government, even harshly, uh, the government can't then take adverse action against them, can't retaliate against them because of that speech or because of that expressive, critical action. On the legal side, uh, if a person is blocked unconstitutionally, then a person could file a lawsuit and ask to have the block removed, ask, to, ask a court to declare this unconstitutional and ask a court to order that the block be removed and that their email access be restored. A person could also potentially sue for um, money damages, depending upon what had happened to them. And then, of course, there also is the basic concept of political accountability um, in terms of the public asking questions about why this happened and why, uh, how it came to be. Well, first by email and on the phone today, I asked Keith Hansen for an interview. We're still waiting to get permission from the media relations person to do so. And as a Professor Schwartzman noted to me on the phone, it's our job to ask why. It doesn't matter if you agree with anything, Mr. Settle Prince or not. Multiple council members from John Nicholson, Grayson Butcher, Lavette Fuller today have all condemned what happened. Miss Fuller, who is Settle's council representative with the city, you know, theoretically he couldn't even reach her by email. She says if it was an intentional block, which the city admits it was, it's unacceptable. You're denying access to public records and public officials. It's no different than turning off the mic at a public comments at city council just because you don't like what you're hearing. And that's what makes it more challenging for the public and the media to hold government accountable. Mr. Settle has options if he chooses through the courts and in the voting booth. And we do too through public records requests when we're denied answers on the phone or by email.